some Easter pull here. I'm going to try to explain myself the best that I can. Um, what happened to me, what really made me change my mind more than anything else, um, as far as a regard to um, a vegan diet practice, vegan, you know, the concern about the animals and the animal well-being. Really the idea of there being an animal that comes into existence and lives its entire life so that you can feel uh, uh, the, the taste of the animal, eating the animal, cooking the animal, smelling the animal, eating the, the part, body parts of the animal, and being satiated with that in your body. In being nutri having that it's a nutritional uh, bodily experience so it, it's really not so much that it is that okay there's there's a there's a spectrum I believe that okay you can say well I went to the store and I had choices I had three choices I had either the factory farm the chicken which was the cheapest one I had the, the non-GMO chicken, the, which was in the free-range chicken, or I had the the little family farm down the road where they raise chickens and they have the chickens and they let them out and they give them uh, lots of variety. They let them live a natural life and then they harvest a chicken and kill the chicken humanely. So it's it's a raised chicken. It's all done humanely. So there's three different there's a range or there's a spectrum of what what that animal had to go through in order for it to end up in your to be part of your, your to be digested now for me I don't judge anyone else I don't you know I don't, I'm not pointing my finger at anyone I'm not trying to I'm not being antagonistic towards people in general about in this issue it's more of something that was very personal for me that I had to become more and more aware of in my life as I'm this has not been something that's been easy for me to acclimate into because of the because of culture because of my how I was raised because of the part of the world that I live in right now um, it has become a little bit more easier this choice because of the the, the the food varieties that are made available at the supermarket. I can go to the supermarket and I can get like meat substitutes and and I can get non-dairy you know products um, and and d different kinds of veg vegetarian dishes that are animal don't have any animal products in them that are flavorful and I can have a variety of food in that regard today. Whereas in the, when I was in my 20s in the 70s and 80s, these kinds of choices weren't that readily available as much as depends upon where you live too if you if you live in a tropical climate if you live in India or you live in a part of the world where it's culturally more acceptable for people to be vegetarian then of course it's going to be easier for you to make that choice but for me it was a personal choice because of the animal if you really think about it even no matter how well raised that animal is and then you eat it you're still having forcing a little being you're forcing another creature a, 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 a being you're forcing it to have to exist in this world on this planet so that you can eat it so by not doing that by just eating plants which are don't sense plants don't have any sensations except you want to argue about you know Venus fly traps or you know some other kind of weird plant that just responds and that's you know but an animal with an, in, an intelligence that has a, a sensory modality to it that has a that has the nervous system and in a complex nervous system in it that that is a potentially aware being that's that's aware that being your 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 diet your your purchases you're forcing it to have to come into existence you're forcing it to be you're you, by your buying it by your eating it you're causing that animal to make to have to to force those animals into existence and by not 
by eating plant-based diet you're you're reducing the amount you're reducing those beings of having to come into existence so in a way I'm like a I'm like a minor ethylist I guess you could say or I'm an animal antinatalist um, But the, this is not something that I've just um, that was easier for that was easy for me to go get into. It hasn't been some in my life. I've thought about it a long time, and it's bothered me a long time. It's you know I've got to, a few times where I was I went and I said what the hell you know I'll just go back to eating meat doesn't matter and I started eating meat again and then I started really started bothering me getting on my conscience. I was having nightmares and so I, I'm. I think about the animals. Is that's you know you can't you know I was you, how can I can't enjoy a meal I can't I couldn't enjoy a meal if I'm thinking about the animal. Um, now I have a relative that they raise chickens and they raise milk goats, and I was over there and it was like they have eggs and they have the milk from the goats and and it was a really the eggs were really good. I ate some eggs there this was a year ago and I had some um, milk from the goats which was really good and I, I really didn't it really didn't bother me that much but it kind of did but it's still at least the animals I knew I saw the animals I knew that the animals were being well taken care of so in that regard there is some it's a high that is a higher ethical level than if you just go to the store and you buy the products because then you're not you're not you're disconnected to that process you're just it's it's you're you're cut off from it so you're not really seeing you're not really you're you're buying the meat from wherever a restaurant or store and you're not you're not you're not you're not seeing how that animal lived now it could be that if for me people are going to make a transition into ethics and they're worried about the ethics of it I guess the next the a better phase would be if you go to the store and they have the chickens there in the store or you go to a farm and they have the chickens there and then you buy the eggs there and you're almost like you're sponsoring the farmer you're spons you're 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 part of the animal you're part of the animals so you're making you're making you're looking in on the animals and you're making sure they're t well taken care of and then you're you know buying the products but still that's you're having to force those animals to come into existence still so but at least it's better than just animals that nobody that that are just for the for the least to for the least for the most monetary gain for the least amount of time and effort which ends up making the animals very uncomfortable so you're causing more harm if you're not buying from a, a local small farmer or whatever so anyhow I'll leave it at that thanks for listening